What's a more iconic war cry than Mortal Kombat followed by great techno music in the 1990s? Like many of you, I grew up playing the Mortal Kombat video games back in the 90s, and I also was super excited to watch the original movie in 1995. Well, 25 years later, I, like all the other Mortal Kombat fans, was super excited to find out they were filming a new Mortal Kombat to be released in 2021 on HBO Max and in theaters. Well, how was it, you ask? Well, let's dive into my personal likes and dislikes of the movie and see how it shows up to the original Mortal Kombat. And with that, there are going to be spoilers in this review, so if you haven't seen it, watch the movie first and then come back and check out this video. And with that, let's get to it. If you follow my channel, you know I'm a sucker for atmosphere, and Mortal Kombat does not disappoint. The film was filmed in Australia, and whether it was having shots of the sun in the background, shots of the forest, or film sets such as the MK favorite, The Pits, everything looks beautiful and is very detailed, which I think helps set the tone of the movie and kept the viewer engaged in the movie. In 1995, when fans first saw Sub-Zero and Scorpion on screen, we lost our minds as they are probably the most popular characters from the franchise. This movie not only gives them an upgrade in appearance, but in story as well. This is one of the few highlights of the reboot, in my opinion, that has done very well. Gone are the voiceless actors besides Scorpions could get over here and come near, and now we have a real story in the line. For those who are new, Hanzo Hashi as Scorpion is a leader of the Shinryu clan, and he is led to believe that his family is killed by the Lin Kuei, which is ran by Sub-Zero. This leads to the origins of how Scorpion gets his spirited Yubi used as a weapon, as well as painting Sub-Zero as the main villain of the movie. But as hardcore fans know, the source where Quan Chi was the one who tricked Scorpion into believing it was Sub-Zero who killed his family, when in fact it was Quan Chi that did so. The movie, however, does not really tie into this plot or into this lore, so we have to see how it plays out in the universe. But besides that, I thought the storytelling with these two characters was done very, very well. Speaking of characters, the movie does a great job updating other characters from the previous film, such as Sonya Blade, played by Jessica McNamee, who has more of an MMA style of fighting than her counterpart, Bridget Wilson, from the original. The character Jax has a backstory to why his bionic arms are the way they are, instead of the wearable ones that were used in Mortal Kombat 2 Annihilation. Reptile appears in this movie as more of a lizard than as the Green Ninja we see in the previous Mortal Kombat. This version, in my opinion, is closer to the Mortal Kombat 4 video game version of Reptile, and it's actually pretty cool and he has an awesome fight scene with Kano and the others. Fan favorite Cabal makes an appearance, and his design is very close to his video game look, as well as his personality and one-liners. Kano's upgrade is done very well as well. His personality is one of the highlights of the film, as he is mostly the comic relief. Fun fact about Kano is that he's actually portrayed by Australian actor Josh Lawson, becoming the first Australian actor to play Kano, as the other two were British. Kano's comic relief replaces that of Raiden from the original film played by Christopher Lambert. This Raiden is more of a serious tone and is portrayed by Tabanabu Azan, and his look is much closer to that of the video game. Finally, the characters of Liu Kang and Kung Lao. While Kung Lao did not appear in the first film or any of the films, his appearance is done very well and very close to source material. Liu Kang's look is better in my opinion in this movie than he is in the previous two. Don't get me wrong, I love Robin Sho, but his outfit did not fit with Liu Kang's in terms of colors, etc. Although Liu Kang is not the main character of this movie, it is nice to see him portrayed closer to the way he is in the video game. The way that powers are explained in the movie is something I really thought was very creative by the writers. The chosen fighters are born with a dragon birthmark or the Mortal Kombat symbol, and it can be transferred to another fighter if the bearer is killed. While training or in distress, the bearer can awaken their arcana, which is their abilities. This can be used to battle stronger foes, such as those in the outworld or other realm. I like this part because it explains how they have their abilities. It gives a little more realism to the story, even though it's kind of weird getting super abilities from just birthmark. And this is another reason why we see Kano without his robotic faceplate in the movie, as this brings a little bit more realism to the characters. Last but not least, the best thing about this movie is the fighting. Mortal Kombat is an action movie. This rendition of Mortal Kombat blows the original out of the water in terms of fighting and violence. Not to mention this movie actually has fatalities. 
I'm not going to show them here because I want you to experience them, but boy are they gory. The original is a classic and it's something I grew up with that I thought was very good, but this one blows it out of the water in terms of action. And it keeps the viewer in the movie because that's why we're here to see is Mortal Kombat or violence and fighting. I did state earlier how I like the upgrades of characters, but there are some that I did not find too appealing. The main character Cole Young is one of them. He just doesn't seem like a likable character in my opinion, he's just very bland. I was not expecting him to be Johnny Cage, but to have a little more charisma to the role. He is fighting for his wife and children, which is a fine reason, but the character is just too bland for me and generic. Another character I thought was fine to include was Melina. This is an upgrade from the regular Melina we've seen with the purple color to a more darker tone of a source character. However, there is no mention of her sister Katana. I don't know if it's something for the sequel, but it was kind of weird having her in there without her twin. As long as we're talking about characters, Raiko and Natara were two other characters that were included. I kind of don't understand why they were because they're kind of unpopular characters and only appeared in a few Mortal Kombat games. So it was kind of a toss up there for, to me why they concluded them. The usage of Goro was not a dislike for me. Although he is so much better looking than the puppeteer Goro in the original, he's only in the movie for a few minutes and has no lines. To me, it was kind of a waste of such a popular character. One thing I won't complain about though is the character of Shang Tsung. Although it's not this Shang Tsung. Your soul is mine. Chin Han still did a great job in his role as Shang Tsung. So in conclusion, what did I think about the movie? Well, as you can probably tell, I have way more likes than dislikes. I didn't expect the movie to have an Oscar screenplay. We came to see a video game adaptation and fan service, and this movie provides that. It is what it is. I actually felt it's probably one of the best video game adaptations to have seen in a while, and maybe to date. And with a cliffhanger ending, it could possibly turn into a whole movie universe. What'd you think? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.